Bonjour à tous, my name is Alice and welcome back to my channel. So I finally move into this new place. Uh, I'll be in Ireland for a year, I'll be working here. So yeah, it is super expensive here, but we'll make it work. Even though I started this video as one of those that girl videos, um, this isn't gonna be any of this. Um, I am myself a big consumer of lifestyle vloggers, that girl content. I do watch a decent amount of them, I see them as free therapy helps me disconnect. But what I want to do in this video is to dig a bit deeper, um, to ask ourselves why do we like that girl, why do we hate her, and what does she tell about the society we live in? What's comforting with that girl in a way is that she seems to have it all figured out. On social media you'll find a bunch of morning routines, productive day in my life, what I eat in a day, etc. Those videos combine different elements like a sense of order, um, repetition, a recurring pastel-like aesthetic. Another very important feature of that girl is the notion of time. Time cannot be wasted. The alarm clock rings at 7 after 8 hours of sleep, the workout lasts 30 minutes, the workday 8 hours, you have to read another 100 pages today, no more than 30 minutes of Instagram or TikTok. You see, even leisure is measured. That girl knows how to find balance between social life and work or fitness. She is your ideal self in a way. Now obviously with all we've said, um, that girl is keen on self-help. She's probably read Atomic Habits, delved into minimalism, the law of attraction, uh, journaling, manifestations, all that sort of things. Now in order to fit everything into her schedule, she'll heavily rely on routines. It starts with the morning routine, an exercise of self-discipline, the first in the day of that girl. So it's like a ritual where she'll mentally prep herself for uh, the rest of the day, a productive day ahead, by accumulating little, low-energy, productive tasks. Accomplishing a morning routine on time is about setting yourself for success. It's about believing that those tiny achievements will lead you to something greater. And that is the basis of the appeal of that girl trend. Because honestly, it sounds very inspiring. It makes it seem achievable to become that girl because it's just a series of little tasks you have to cross off a to-do list. Philosopher Foucault referred to that self-imposed, self-care type of discipline as technique de soi, the culture of the self and art of conducting yourself, and I think it perfectly fits the that girl trend. What he meant by that is that in search of their best version, individuals will undergo a certain amount of operations, of exercises on their bodies, their mode of thinking, their behavior, and way of being in order to reach a degree of happiness, purity, wisdom, or perfection. Those exercises become part of the life of that girl to the point where she doesn't notice them anymore. The self-discipline progressively gets internalized. Now, on the other side of the screen, uh, viewers get fulfillment from those videos because they are reassured by a sense of expectation. You follow someone because you liked what they did in the past, you like what they do, and you hope that they'll continue to do the same thing in the future. We want repetition. We want the same person, the same aesthetic, the same location. How many YouTubers or uh, influencers have seen their career hit by, yeah, a change of location, a change of personality, of routine? It shows that we're not particularly attached to the person, but more to the character and the story um, she has created. As an example, I recently watched one of Moya's videos, um, latest videos. Moya is a very talented lifestyle vlogger, probably one of my favorites. And in the video, she talked about the fact that since she came out of lockdown, she started to go out and socialize more, and that people commented that they missed lockdown Moya, that she was different, when Moya stated that she had never felt more like herself than now. In a way, Moya failed to conform to the expectations she had created. She couldn't be as self-disciplined and work-oriented as she used to be. And by the way, it's totally normal. Like, we are human beings, we're not machines. Also, I watched Philosophy Tube's newest video yesterday and she made a point that is totally applicable to what I've just said. Namely, that Moya's desire to be productive and self-disciplined doesn't only come from herself. Moya's videos are being watched by hundreds of thousands of people, anonymous people for the most part, who constantly judge her and what she's doing, willing to disengage if she does not sustain the standards she has set. That invisible pressure, 
the mass viewers, is similar to the concept of the panopticon, a type of prison Foucault studied a lot. The prison is designed to ensure that all prisoners are observed by a single guard without being able to tell whether they are being watched. Moya knows that she is being watched constantly. She's trapped in a situation where she has to keep going and continue to produce the same productivity, routine, related content because people are waiting for it and want to watch it on a regular basis. In a way, we are the guards and she's the prisoner. That sounded very dramatic. Luckily, Moya seemed to be happy to make videos, but yeah, you, you get the idea. Another example I use to show how influencers can sometimes fail to conform to the character they have created is that of privilege, uh, recognition of privilege. Other people, YouTubers, content creators, have already showed that um, lifestyle vloggers in general come from privileged backgrounds. And so obviously it has happened multiple times that Larissa influencers have committed the highest crime possible on social media. They have said something problematic. They have exposed their privilege or their lack of awareness of that privilege. Whether it's that girl saying that lockdown allowed her to focus on herself, to slow down, or whether it's that girl um, going abroad to study when she could have done it online at home. I don't want to discuss if those things are problematic or not, that's not the point of this video. But what I find interesting is what we're exposing here, beyond the privilege. We are exposing what French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu referred to as the habitus. And that concept is super exciting, at least I find it super exciting, and you should too. If you don't know that concept already, well, it'll make you see the world with new eyes. A habitus is the way that individuals perceive the social world around them and react to it. A habitus is shared by people with similar backgrounds, such as social class, religion, nationality, ethnicity, education, political beliefs and profession. The habitus is acquired through imitation. It represents the way group culture shaped the body and the mind. So for example, a young man working in the tech industry um, in the Silicon Valley is going to have a very different habitus from an old countryside woman working on a farm. Now that you more or less understand the concept, let's apply it to that girl. So when you watch a that girl video, you discover habitus. And to be honest, most that girls share a very similar habitus. One of the characteristics of habitus in general is that they are based on social grouping. People are rarely aware they belong to a habitus, but we all do. Actually, social media and algorithms are very good at uncovering your habitus and targeting content that people from the same habitus as you, people with the same tastes, the same background as you, engage with. The fact that we are mostly unconscious of the existence of the habitus makes it very hard for us to question the very structure of it. So for example, on social media, many habitus cohabit. People with different economic status, from different countries, religion, gender, tastes, find themselves on the same platform so that an Indian girl whose family has been struggling to get access to healthcare uh, during lockdown can find it a bit disheartening that a middle-class English girl uh, will say that lockdown was a period of self-reflection and personal development. I wouldn't be able to fully understand that Indian girl because my habitus is closest to that English middle-class girl. My experience of lockdown was a very privileged one and I am now aware of it. That's what's really lacking, the awareness of the existence of a habitus and how it distances you from other people. So I went to the library recently and found this book from retail and brand expert girl boss Mary Portas. Rebuild, how to thrive in the new kindness economy. She argues that over the past 30 years, the business of what we buy has been dominated by the biggest, fastest and cheapest. But those values no longer resonate. We've come to realize that more doesn't equal better. We are all ready to put people and planet before profit. This kindness economy is a new value system where, in order to thrive, businesses must understand the fundamental role they play in the fabric of our lives. Because we don't just want to buy from brands, we want to buy into them. That is exactly what I mean when I say that people can be very unaware of their habitus. In this case, Mary Portas projects her reality as the reality. 
um, namely that her and her business friends now want to be ethical, they want to care about the environment. That's her reality, her immediate environment. But the reality is that billionaires have continued to monopolize wealth and that workers have to move into more and more precarious jobs. And nobody cares. Business as usual. So no, I do not see a new kindness economy but yes, if you live in that bubble and you do not interact with people outside of that bubble, of course you're going to think that that's how things work now. And now it's time to mix everything we've learned today and come to our conclusion. Just to recap, we talked about the self-discipline of that girl, um, the value given to routines, self-care as a way to exercise and prove that self-discipline, which led us to talk about the concept of the habitus, what your routine, your ideas and way of living, of eating even, the people you interact with, tell about yourself. Now what I want to argue in this last part is that all the elements we've analysed show that the that girl trend carries with it an ideology. I know it's hard to see it because it's not conveyed explicitly, it's conveyed through images, videos, vlogs. The term ideology has to be understood as Roland Barthes defined it, meaning what is repeated and consistent. The more you see something presented as true, the more you believe it to be true. Ideas are created by repetition. In that case, the disciplined body of that girl serves as a canvas for ideas. She projects an ideology because she has an impact on the people watching her, who probably watch other people just like her. That's the repetition element. She'll choose to act a certain way, to work out, to eat well and work hard, and she'll choose not to do other things, being lazy or eating junk food. If you're like me and you watch multiple vloggers, you realise that you're very often confronted with the same habitus, almost becoming a parody of itself. You're confronted with the same mode of thinking, times and times again, and start to think that that is the way to be, that you need to conform to that model to be happy and successful. I'm not saying that lifestyle influencers indoctrinate you, yet the fact that we like that content, that we get recommended that content, show that this is what we define as success. That person is doing exactly what society wants them to do. Be fit, healthy, um, productive, work hard, be woke but not too radical. That girl is the embodiment of what is now referred to as ethical capitalism, a form of capitalism that defines itself by a rejection of so-called dirty money capitalism, refusing to see that, honestly, and as I've said in my I Don't Dream of Labour video, there is no good or bad capitalists. It's all about performance. The mechanism are the same, just with the that girl trend. It's all about performance, performing. We're putting a pastel filter to gloss over how disgusting the system actually is. Unconsciously, lifestyle influencers who conform to that model perpetuate that very model. But can we really blame them? We are the one clicking on those videos more than the other video they produce. Um, I, myself, identify to those people. Um, I am very close to their habitus and I somehow comply to the ideology they convey. I think most of my friends would say that I bear a lot of similarities with that girl. But it doesn't mean that I'm a slave to the system, that I'm brainwashed or anything. Having a nice little routine makes me happy. And I'm very much aware a big part of it comes from a sort of self-discipline I have internalized. But first, I don't particularly try to promote it to my friends or on social media. I try my best not to impose it on friends, family, as the only recipe for happiness and success. And more importantly, I am aware of it. I am aware of those influences uh, that shape who I am, how I think, my personality, my goals, my habitus. So if you want to take something out of this video is to always question yourself. Who are you? What is your habitus? How does it make you different or distant from other people? And actually, as this video comes live, I'll be releasing a survey that I prepared with my dear sociology student friend, asking you questions on your social class, gender, um, occupation, uh, degree, stuff like that. So please, please go and check it out. It only takes five minutes to complete and it would help me a lot uh, to better understand you, but also for future videos. That's it. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. It's getting a bit hot in here. Um, I had to close all the windows because there's a football match going on over there, or I don't know. It is super noisy. Uh, there was a dog earlier. Ugh, I'll have to find out what is the best time to film over here. Um, but yeah, we'll make it work. Um, so yeah, we can continue that discussion in the comment section, of course. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, and yeah, 
I'll see you next week. Salut